All right, back in the basement again today to continue the Building the Bar series. This is the third video in the series and it's been about six months since my last update. If you haven't seen the other two, I'll link the playlist in the description box below. The first video I talked about the specs that I thought would make a very good everyday powerlifting bar, a daily driver if you will. The second video was getting in a sample shaft with sample neural and picking the neural we thought were good. And that's where we left it six months ago and a lot has changed since then. So initially planning this bar out, we wanted to go with a stainless steel shaft with aggressive knurling. And that's what we had basically settled on. But as I've just said, this process has taken a lot longer than I thought. And by the time the company got back to me with some updated pricing, it actually raised the price substantially. So at first we we're planning on releasing that bar at roughly under $400, I'd say like $375 or so, give or take, you know? So a very competitively priced bar when you take a look at the stainless steel bars on the market, especially based off some of the specs that we've come up with. Now the company came back and said that bar now would cost roughly $500 to manufacture. And I said, I don't think that's a very viable option for most people. And I say that because the company that I have yet to name to this point is just because it's not a company really well known for producing high level quality power lifting bars. And this would be the first in that line and coming out with something that is $500, which is a lot of money for a lot of people, just didn't make much sense. So if we couldn't hit that initial price point, it didn't make sense to continue. So I continued talking with this company and manufacturer about other potential options. And I had mentioned that I really like black oxide. Now, true, it does not offer much corrosion resistance and depending on how it's applied, it can rub off in time. If done right though, I find that it's a very viable finish, namely because it offers a sliver of resistance protection, which doesn't really impact me here in my basement in particular with a humidifier running in low humidity, but it looks pretty cool because it's this matte black finish that looks a lot like Cerakote that has a really good grippy kind of chalky feel to it but it also does probably the best besides bare steel and stainless steel in terms of actual feel of the knurling. So we decided to give that a run because that would bring the price point for this bar in at under $300. So I think that's more attractive again, given some of the specs that we've come up with. So speaking of the specs, this is the first sample bar in black oxide. The big things to call out, standard powerlifting neural marks. The center neural is actually extended. It's seven inches long, which I really like. I like the longer length here because on squats and things like that, I find it tends to grip more of your back while not getting in the way for things like conventional deadlifting. The sleeves on this are 16 and a half loadable, which I think is fine for a powerlifting bar. You don't need some of these really elongated sleeves you'll see on some of these specialty bars, which no one will really ever fill up, especially if you're using like competition style plates or machined plates. The only time you'd really have to worry about that is if you're using a bunch of bumper plates potentially or rogue deep dishes. And the actual collars on this bar are one inch thick. So not as thin as a competition, which I find is really off-putting for people because they tend to bang the uprights quite a bit, but not so thick where it's going to add in extra whip or flex to the bar because again, those thicker collars pushes the weight out further, which under heavy load can end with more flex or more whip in the bar depending on where you are. So. I find like we went for some really good specs. And if you remember from the last video, we had settled on a pretty aggressive knurling and I'll show a picture of it here. It is pretty sharp and aggressive, but the peaks are still not fully present. So it does offer some grip and not to the point where it would rip off your hands. So a very good feeling grippy bar. Now the upside also of going with a black oxide finish is stainless steel tends to be softer than some of the other metals out there and the tooling required cannot usually go as deep or as aggressive from what the company has told me, at least their manufacturer, which I don't know at this point if that's actually true or not, considering that the Rogue Agro bars are stainless steel and super, super sharp when you get to the Agro 3X version. Uh, but that being said, with this black oxide, we said we'd go even more aggressive than the sample version that we settled on. So getting this bar in and using it, the very first thing that I noticed is the knurling is not what we had asked for. In fact, it's much more passive than any of the other options they had already provided. So where it was supposed to be even more aggressive, it was even more passive than I have felt. So the knurling for this is a big disappointment, which is again, one of the downsides of going overseas. You can't really do a lot of quality control checks for what you get until you receive it, which in this case is six months after we basically put that order in and we're left with this particular knurling. And again, it's hard for me to attach my name as a consultant on this bar or this company until I know they can dial it in, which is again why I've been so hesitant to do so. So the knurling on here, I would put it at like a five out of 10. It's not awful, 
It's just not what we asked for. And for many, they'd probably find this comfortable, but for an everyday daily driver power bar, I want something a little bit more aggressive, especially when we submitted what they had sent us for samples and settled on a certain thing and we did not get it. That was the first thing I noticed. Now I did bench, squat, and deadlift with this bar and it worked out fine. But as I was actually squatting with it, I noticed something different. As I mentioned already, the collars on this, the sleeve length, the collar should have been one inch thick, which they are. However, they should still probably end me to clip some of these uprights just a little bit. So these are thinner than what my Ohio Power Bar 45 pound version was. And even on that occasion, I sometimes will clip the bars or the uprights with heavy weights. I had no problems with this bar whatsoever. Super simple to walk out. And I'd like to give credit for myself for cleaning up my walkout, but it seemed a little funky to me, especially when I looked on either side and saw there was quite a good amount of space still that I wasn't even close. I broke out the tape measure and noticed that the center portion was actually 54 inches in between when it should have been 52. And in fact, if you take a look at over by the collars, you can see about an inch worth of unknurled shaft. That is ideally where the collars and sleeves should have started. And I think what happened is the manufacturer on the back end overseas took a look at our specs and our drawing and they didn't necessarily add everything up correctly because when you take a look at the sleeves on the diagram, which I'll show you on the screen now, it says 16 and a quarter, which is what we wanted the loadable sleeve length to be. And instead they included the collars in that measurement. So it ended up having to sacrifice something. In this case, they ended up just having a longer shaft in the middle. And again, for the most part, I didn't notice it at the weights I used for squats and deadlifts. I think I worked up like to the low 400s, mid 400s. So not super heavy where you're gonna notice an extra flex necessarily, but under heavier loads, you probably would. And again, it's not what we asked for. So again, a downside of part of this product building process is not getting what you asked for. So overall, the bar worked well, but it's not what we needed. We need more aggressive neural on here. In terms of the construction otherwise, the bar is, is pretty nice. In fact, the sleeves on this things, even though they're bushings, they spin better than some of my needle bearing bars, which is really weird. In fact, I put a plate on here and spun it and it spun for over six minutes. In fact, almost seven minutes, I wanna say, before it finally stopped rolling. So not a selling point for this bar because you don't need that for a powerlifting bar, but I just thought it was really interesting that it would do that. So. From here, where do we go? We need to go back. We need to get the more aggressive neural that we asked for and be able to nail it consistently. And then also be able to bring those actual sleeves and collars in an inch on either side and elongate the loadable sleeve area by an inch on either side so that we have exactly the bar that we asked for. And I think if we do that and the company can get this in at $300 or less, I think a lot of you guys would really like this as a daily driver that's affordable, looks good, and has a lot of nice specifications behind it. But as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Open your feedback. You guys have helped me craft this bar and get to this point till now. So really interested to hear what you guys will think about this. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.